Welcome to IdeaGen TV. We are thrilled to have with us Megan Battalion, Chief Technology Officer at, at Astral Lab and Vice President for the Washington Global Health Alliance. Megan, welcome. Hi, George. Thank you. Megan, today we're talking about one of our favorite goals of the UN Global Goals, which is goal number five, the empowerment of women and girls as part of our Empowering Women and Girls Summit series. Megan, as a leader in your industry, what has been the most significant barrier in your career? Well, um, you know, to, to, to be honest, it's, uh, it's one of those things that uh, that people talk about um, as as far as the the Me Too movement um, goes, uh, and and have really um, heightened the experiences that that women um, face when they're when they're in not you know not only their per personal lives but but especially all, also their business lives. Um, it can tend to be extremely difficult to to get opportunities um, and. You know, whereas I may have graduated um, with you know, the same same degree as as one of my colleagues, um, you know, and, and in many cases with with better grades, I, I still was struggling um, to to really land certain certain positions, certain roles um, that were were delivered to men, um, and had often seen throughout my career uh, men being promoted. Um, over me, uh, even even if their achievements um, hadn't been perhaps as as strong as mine, and we're starting to see a shift in that now, um, and we're starting to see more awareness awareness of this, and and really a lot of this, and it, and it goes on far beyond gender gender bias, but it's this unconscious bias in in general um, that people really didn't really didn't understand uh, or it wasn't as clear to them before that that was even a thing. Um, and uh, talking about unconscious bias can really bring about some cognitive dissonance um, for, for some people thinking, well, I'm, you know, I'm not biased. I'm, I'm, I'm just me. Um, and, and then understanding how unconscious bias actually really does uh, affect us in our, in our daily lives and all these little things, you can start to see how they start to add up. And then all of a sudden you'll end up with a C-suite that looks exactly the same. They're all the same, uh, you know, age range and gender and, and maybe sometimes even um, uh, school background or, or um, uh, ethnic background or, you know, some sort of cluster of, of things because people do have a tendency to gravitate toward, toward um, um, things that they're familiar with. And so it's take, taking a step back and, and getting out of the box is, is where I've been able to turn those challenges in my life into greater opportunities where now I have the opportunity to help people that are um, perhaps facing some sort of um, unconscious bias themselves and work to elevate them um, as much as possible. Perhaps that's, um, you know, with with contracts that I can give through, you know, through one of my organizations, perhaps that's mentorship that I can that I can offer. Um, you know, sometimes it's just as as, as simple as um, a, a promotion within one of my own internal organizations. But I, I strive to to understand um, and recognize uh, meritorious behavior whenever possible, uh, and and really make sure I'm looking at that through a lens of you know, what was, what was delivered, what was achieved, not necessarily, you know, what, what, who was the person that, that did this and um, trying to, to ignore all of those, those outside parameters, um, ignore is probably not the right word, uh, not let them bias my decisions um, to the extent that maybe they would if I weren't consciously, constantly thinking about it. You know, that's incredible perspective. And moving a step further for the young women and girls across the planet that are perhaps aspiring to follow in similar footsteps as yours, what would your advice be to them? Uh, you know, um, there's, there is no blanket advice because it really depends upon 
the opportunities that are available to uh, those young women and girls, depending upon you know where 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 they live, what um, what access to uh, education and and healthcare and food and water that they may have. So there's not necessarily a blanket statement. Um, but one thing that I think all women and and girls have is tenacity. Um, tenacity and drive uh, to not only provide a better life for ourselves, but a better life for our families. And that tenacity can always translate into taking the next step um, you know, in, in that journey. And maybe it means that you're uh, starting a, a new company. Um, and, and by that, it doesn't necessarily need to be, you know, some, some multinational conglomeration. This can be a water delivery service. Um, this can be, uh, um, weaving baskets, um, for, for, for tourists to take home with them, um, or, or sewing pillows. This could be, uh, um, creating so new services of, um, a food delivery for, um, people who may not be able to make it into to markets. There's a lot of different opportunities that are that are out there, and they don't necessarily all need to be for profit uh, dollars, you know. E either there's there's opportunities that can um, you can use your tenacity to create opportunities in uh, in the process of creating opportunities, right? Like try to get to a point where no matter what it is that you're doing, you're able to elevate the people around you and bring everybody up together. And I think that that is one common thing uh, that women and girls around the globe have the ability to do is to reach out and try to elevate the other people around them um, so that we all grow together. Incredible, incredible guidance and what an incredible journey as well, Megan. And so how are you using the absolutely incredible platform that you have built for yourself to help empower women and girls across the planet. I have a couple of different mechanisms. Um, you know, uh, one of my favorite organizations is, is my alma mater, the Scripps Institution of Oceanography. Um, and I have had the distinct pleasure to work with some incredible students there over the years, especially as it pertains to the um, UN Climate Conference. And uh, we've attended as, uh, as a delegation together um, throughout these years and really getting to know these students and work with them very closely. And even if their work didn't have a, a, an immediate facet that they recognized of global health, working with them to understand how much global health really does play into to what they're, they're, they're doing and what they're thinking about. Um, and, and I've seen some absolutely phenomenal um, uh, students throughout this just blossom into incredible, incredible researchers and have moved on to their own labs um they're they're now you know they're not they're they're no longer a, a grad student or a postdoc now they're they're a professor somewhere and they're teaching their their own students how to uh really think about everything from a from a, a human and planetary health perspective and how everything ties together um and so i think that my experience working with sio and um working with them at, at cop has been one of my absolute favorite projects um, to be able to mentor such a special group of, of students. Absolutely inspiring, Megan. And so have you drawn any of your inspiration from other female leaders in your field that came before you? And if so, who were they? Uh, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, my goodness, um, there there are there are quite a few people that 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 I can think of. Um, but uh, so Margaret Leinen, um is the uh, um, she's the the director, uh, the chance the vice chancellor at uh, Scripps Institution of Oceanography, which I mentioned before, and 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 not to you know use the 
Alex platform to, to elevate them, but you did ask that question. Um, she is one of these uh, really incredible people that has had a um, diverse career uh, in, in both business and in research. Um, and she's, she's brought the university um, this new, really interesting way of, of thinking and approaching interdisciplinary research. Um, and so I think that um, I stand in awe of what she's been able to accomplish. Um, and I feel very fortunate that once in a while when I'm down in San Diego and, and she's got a little time, she's still willing to, to meet and have coffee with me so I can pick her brain a little bit more because I think she's, she's just truly one of those um, phenomenal individuals. Um, there, are, there are so many women um, that, I, that I admire and, and I look up to. Um, and, you know, honestly, uh, it's hard to choose. Uh, if there's one more, um, and this is my best friend growing up from the time that we were super little, and I mean like three years old, and her name is Nikki Curtis, and uh, Nikki Curtis Everhart now. Um, Nikki is now the uh, the, the director of the um, Global Citizen Project, which you may have heard. They throw these like really big concerts, and they're very, very focused on um, um, making positive social global impact, not only from an um, environmental health aspect, but also from a, from a human health aspect. And just watching Nikki from the time that we were young, uh, young ladies growing all the way up together and then seeing how we've both evolved through our, through our years and our careers and then seeing what Nikki has been able to do. She's got uh, uh, um, both her master's and her PhD. She was living in Russia for a while. Um, you know, and now she's working with with Delta and Global Citizen and doing all of these things and making these um, incredible and impactful um, events is just awe inspiring for me. So I think she's she'd be another one. <laughs> so the list is very long, Megan. It's really when you think about those points of light to use that euphemism here, the, these are all points of light in a sense. Right. These are extraordinary individuals that spark change. And by the way, I think part of the message today that I'm hearing is that an individual can change the world, can change the world, it's possible. And it begins right there in your own city, community, home. You know, it begins right there and it can really spark change that will blow your mind, for lack of a better way to describe it. And that is what you're doing, Megan. Megan Battalion, you are changing the world. And so we want to express our sincerest gratitude to you, to Ed Astral, to the Washington Global Health Alliance, to all of your colleagues, to everyone that you work with each and every day that's helping you change the world as well. It's just an incredible network and incredible individuals dedicated to achieving these global goals. And so I'd like to ask you, Megan, what is your call to action today for our global audience as we work to progress and ultimately achieve goal number five of the United Nations Global Goals? Empowering women and girls is not something that we need to, uh, should just that we should just say. Um, it's something that we need to live and breathe and actualize. Um, it's 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 very easy for me as a woman to to stand back and say, well, of course I want to give other women opportunity, but it's it's uh, it, it's harder um, to actually put that into to practice. And so, you know, I I, I challenge I, I challenge everyone, uh, regardless of your gender, to check your unconscious bias, make sure that you understand why it is that you're actually making decisions, and work really really hard to create opportunities that may not have existed before for the sole purpose of providing a way to elevate people who do not typically receive those opportunities. And be sure that when you're going through your, your hiring practices and, and everything else, that you really truly understand why you're making the decisions that you are to 
you know, hire somebody that looks and speaks and talks exactly like you, as opposed to somebody else that might be able to bring you or your organization a completely new perspective that could change the course of your organization. Um, so I challenge all of you to really, really think about why you're making your decisions and to, to try to do as much as you can to empower those around you who may not have received the same opportunities as you. Megan Battalion, Chief Technology Officer at Astral Lab and Vice President for the Washington Global Health Alliance. Thank you for all you're doing to change the world. Thank you, George.